Okay, hi again, Attorney Steve Vondren here, Intellectual Property Law at Issue in this video. So we are talking about copyright bullies, bit torrent lawsuits, what some people refer to as legal extortion, what other people refer to as a shakedown. Okay, so you have all sorts of different things, but this video is going to talk about should I respond to a copyright cease and desist letter or ignore it? Am I going to get in trouble? Can I just sweep it under the rug? I'm going to give you some general tips that we look at. And if you want to find this blog, this is a blog I just wrote. This is off our website. You can go to copyrightbully.com. Copyrightbully.com. That's our resource center for BitTorrent, file sharing, uh, lawsuits, demand letters, subpoenas, investigations, those kinds of things. So, But in this blog that we wrote, we talk about cease and desist letters and some of the factors that we look at, and I'm just going to point you to this section here of this blog article that we wrote, and we are talking in this video about this particular factor. Does the copyright holder have a history of filing suits? So this is one of the five, let's just say, main factors that I'm going to look at in deciding should we respond to the letter that you received. You may have received a demand letter asking for $150,000 for an illegally downloaded video. Oftentimes it's pornographic adult videos and things like that, things where they might try to embarrass you. So what you want to try to do is find out, can I just sweep it under the rug, or is this something where I'm actually going to get sued if I don't respond? So one of the factors here, does the copyright holder have a history of filing lawsuits? Well, how do you figure that out? I mean, it's not something... Now, one thing, of course, you can do, you can just do a simple... Uh, search. Let's just pick a company here, not to pick on anyone, but let's just say Microsoft is suing. Does Microsoft sue for illegal downloads? Um, so you can do a simple search like that if you want. That's something that you can you can take a look at. Um, so this is a basic search. Here's something about BitTorrent. But it, I'm going to share with you one of my secrets, something I like to use. I'll switch over here to a new screen. It's called Pacer. Pacer, if you haven't heard of this, this is a big tool for attorneys, litigators. This is a gold mine of information here on who's doing what, okay? So what is Pacer? Pacer is a federal online database that captures, tells you right here, tells you about all the cases that are being filed in the federal courts. Now, first thing you're going to want to do is hit that register, register for an account, I'm not sure if it asks you for a credit card or not. It's been a while. But what's cool about it is you can buy documents on here. They're not that expensive. But you need to register to be able to get in and use it. So get on your registration page, and that'll walk you through. If it ever loads there, that'll walk you through. But where I like to go after you're registered, hit this Find a Case button right here. This is handy. Search the Pacer Case Locator. And you, you'll see, you can go all courts, you can look at just appellate court cases, you can look up bankruptcy filings, um, you can look up and see if your friends filed bankruptcy, that's something that people do. Um, civil, you can look up your civil cases, criminal cases, and multi-district litigation. Where I go, right here, civil. Uh, if you have the case number, you can put that in. You want the region, you can put that in. Where I like to go to figure these things out, however, is I'll just come right here and I'll type in copyright nature of the lawsuit. So this is the nature of the lawsuit that was filed. And let's just go with our Microsoft example. We want to find out, does Microsoft sue people for illegally downloading their products? Let's just say Microsoft Office, for example. Do Would they actually file a suit? So if you got a letter from Microsoft or one of their attorneys and your, or, the, or the Business Software Alliance, what we call the BSA, um, you know, somebody saying you're illegally downloading and sharing files on BitTorrent, you can come in here, put their party name. If it's a person, if it's a law firm, for example, you may want to put, you know, Jones, Henry, and look up the attorney. See if the attorney's actually filed lawsuits or not, okay? Hit the search button and you'll be able to see that in a second. I'll show you. But for now, let's just say we're looking at Microsoft. We want to know, does, is Microsoft really going to sue? So you can hit the search button. Okay, um, here's a case, Microsoft, you can see the PLA, that means they were the plaintiff, okay? As you can see, wow, lots of plaintiffs, lots of plaintiff actions by Microsoft. They're not afraid to sue you. Here's the date they were filed, and here's the date they were closed. For example, in this one, you can see this was filed in October 2007, and the case didn't close until August of the following year, so that was a good, what, eight, nine-month lawsuit. 
But what you can do here, and this will tell you the court, okay, the different courts. I think that's probably Utah. But let's do this. Here's the case. What you do to drill down, this is golden information here. I hope you are taking notes and being a good student here. 2207, let's click it out. Now, what pops up is a box, and it shows you a lot of different things, associated cases. It'll show you who the attorney is, a case summary. Where I like to go is right here. I don't mess around. I get right into the legal filings. Let's see what's going on. I'm going to run a query, all events. I want all the history, and I'm just going to go oldest date first find. Run query, okay? So, boom, there it is. Here's the case. It's Microsoft versus Marshall. This was filed in 2007, and so this case ended. Now, sometimes you may want to go just towards the bottom here and find out, well, what happened? Did What did the case end? What happened? Somebody withdrew as attorney. Uh, there was a status conference. Something I like to go is see if there were any orders or motions filed. Um, here, I don't see much. I don't see much. But where I do go is right to the complaint. We'll go, well, what was this about? I'd like to know. So you hit the complaint. Here's the document. It's a 20-page complaint, as you can see. And here's the civil cover case sheet. That's not real important, but if you want to look at it, you can. And here's all the exhibits to the complaints. So you can go through, click on any of these, and get the exhibits. Of course, you got to pay for them. It's not much. Buck or two. Depends on the size of it. But I like to just go right here. Let's get to the juice. Let's get to the complaint. Let's see what's going on. Here it is. You can see that's my login. I'm going to be paying for this. 20 pages, two bucks. Okay, big deal. View document. And so you can come in here and you can go, oh, I see. Now, here's the, here's the law firm that filed. Here's where they're at. Yes, yeah, was a Utah case, in fact. Plaintiff was Microsoft, Central Di Division. They were suing somebody as a, as a dealer. Um, and it says here, this is an action by Microsoft to recover damages arising from infringement of, infringement of Microsoft's copyrights and trademarks in its software and related components, blah, blah, blah. So, yes, they are going. You can get a look here at the parties, the jurisdiction, where's the case, why is it there, this venue. And then as you can see, as you're getting down, now they're talking about Windows XP, professional. Um, obviously, there's some infringement claims. Microsoft holds a valid copyright. So you're going into all this. There's Microsoft to Office Excel, Outlook, PowerPoint, uh, Office Pro, you know, all these different publishers. So somebody was being sued. Access, another one of the programs, is bundled into the Microsoft Office product. So you can see there was a big lawsuit and all kinds of things being filed here. So based on a search of like this, you can tell yourself, yeah, it does look like Microsoft does sue. So that is one of the factors that maybe they will be looking at and deciding, should we be responding or just ignoring? What should we be doing? So that's some general information. I hope that's helpful. If you need some help in a copyright infringement case, a software audit, cease and desist letter, you get a notice of infringement from your ISP, somebody's serving a subpoena, trying to ascertain your identity. For example, in an adult uh, download of pornography case, those kinds of things, give us a call. You, you can find out more information at Copyright Bully. Dot com. Okay, Attorney Steve Bonner, and hope this is helpful. We will talk to you again.